this video we're talking about addition and subtraction of radical terms and what we've been asked to do is simplify the radical expression so we're talking about expressions not equations there's no equal sign so we're dealing with an expression and we call it a radical expression because there are radical signs involved or square root signs involved so in this first example here we have 4 times the square root of 2 minus 6 times the square root of 2 plus 13 times the square root of 2 so because we have subtraction and addition we're just dealing with addition and subtraction no multiplication or division. So when you have addition and subtraction of square root signs, how do you simplify? Well, what you're looking for is like terms. You're looking for the square roots to be the same. If the square roots are the same, then you can combine the terms as like terms. So what I need to look at here is my square roots, and I can see that I have square root of 2, I have square root of 2, and I have square root of 2. In other words, these three are all the same. They're like terms. So that means I can combine them. You could in your head sort of substitute, for example, an x for square root of 2, and you could say that this is 4x minus 6x plus 13x. It's the same thing. You're saying 4 square root of 2s minus 6 square root of 2s plus 13 square root of 2s. Or we could say we have 4 orange boxes, we take away 6 orange boxes, and then we add back 13 orange boxes. How many orange boxes do we have? So don't get confused by the fact that these are square roots. Just identify which ones are the same and then combine like terms. So when we say 4 minus 6, we get negative 2 negative 2 plus 13 is positive 11, so that means we have 11 square root of 2's, and 11 square root 2 is our final answer. Let's look at another problem here. We have 4 times root 3 minus 2 times root 2 plus 6 square root of 5. Well, in this case, we have a square root of 3, a square root of 2, and a square root of 5. These are all different numbers, so they're not like terms. We can't combine these at all. This radical expression is already simplified as much as it can be simplified. We can't combine the terms at all, so that one's done. Let's look at another example, 12 root 7 plus 6 root 7 minus 20 root 7. Same thing here, we look at our square roots and we can see that they're all the same. They're all square root of seven, which means that these are like terms that we can combine. So we just take 12 plus six is 18. 18 minus 20 is a negative two. So our answer is gonna be negative two root seven. Now in this next example, I'm gonna go a little bit further than our current understanding of radical addition and subtraction. This is actually gonna get a little bit into radical multiplication, but the point I wanna make is that you can't just always look at these radical signs and say, oh, these numbers are different. I have square root of three, square root of two, square root of five. There's nothing I can do, so I'm done. Later, we're gonna learn about radical multiplication rules and the radical multiplication rule that tells us that when we have the square root of m times n, in other words, when we have two things that are multiplied together underneath one square root, we can separate those into two different square roots. So that's gonna be equal to the square root of m times the square root of n. So when I look at a problem like this, three times the square root of five plus two times the square root of 20, I see radical addition here, I have an addition sign, and I see that my radicals are different. I have square root of five and square root of 20. So I might be tempted, like this second example, to say there's nothing I can do, I can't simplify it at all. But in fact, that's not true because we can use this rule here where we have the square root of m times n and break it into two square roots. What I need to realize is that 20 is the same thing as five times four, right? Five times four is equal to 20. So I won't actually change this expression at all if I rewrite it as three times the square root of five plus two times the square root of five times four. So I've rewritten 20 to be five times four and now, based on this formula I have up here, where I have two things multiplied together underneath one square root sign, I can break them apart into two square roots. So instead of saying the square root of five times four, I can say three square root of five plus two, I can say the square root of five times the square root of four. I'm gonna replace the square root of four with two. And now I can say two times two to get four. So I can say three root five plus four root five. And now notice that I still have root five and root five. I have like terms, I have the same square root. So I just take three plus four, I get seven. And my final answer is seven square root of five. The reason I couldn't do anything with this problem is because I couldn't break three or two or five into two different factors. For example, I couldn't divide five by two or divide five by three to get a common square root among these three terms. 
Here though, I could split 20 into five times four, break the square roots apart and get a common square root here of five in order to combine like terms. So again, this example goes beyond our current understanding of radical addition and subtraction, but I wanted to show it to you so that you know that you have to be careful of this fact here. And remember that just because you see two different values under the radical signs doesn't necessarily mean that you can't combine them. You have to look out for this rule here where you can factor this 20 into its factors of five and four. But that's how you deal with addition and subtraction of radical terms.